Hello everybody. So, um, I'm going to be spinning some 100% Angora, uh, which is a little bit tricky. So I'm just going to talk about my process and show a couple different ways to do this. So, um, I'm not going to go too in depth about Angoras in this because I've tried to do that a couple times and it just takes forever. So. Angora is from Rabbits. Uh, this is shorn fiber. So much like when you shear a sheep, um, you can shear these rabbits. And so this results in a cut end and the tip end. So this part is shorn. It's a, bit, a blunt end, they call it. Um, I, you can obviously see it here, but as far as feeling it, my name is Sarah, but I'm not like the princess and the pea, so <laughs> uh, that's up to you and your sensitivity and everything. But I like this would be spinning from the cloud, um, which is generally done with plucked fiber, not shorn, but you can do it either way. Um, so I just like to have a quick look and try to find any very obvious second cuts, which I'm actually not seeing too much in this. So I'm going to go ahead and, and spin this. Um, I do actually usually like to have some lotion on my hands because I work with my hands a lot, so my hands get really rough. Um, and sometimes the fiber just sticks to everything on my hands. I did also cut my nails yesterday, but I forgot to put lotion on. But anyways, it's fine. Uh, some people are like, no lotion on your hands, like, it's going to felt the fiber. Um, is it really a problem when you're spinning it to have your singles felt as well? Like, just to themselves? I don't think so. So anyways, um, this part is kind of stuck together so I'm like really pulling on it and that's getting really thin now. So this part, it has started to mat together. So I just want to kind of pull it apart a little bit. Um, you can also make Rolags. Um, I would caution against using a drum carter for a hundred percent Angora spinning just because a drum carter is going to be a bit more aggressive than hand carting. Either way, you know, you still have the same basic thing that you're doing to the fiber. Um, so if you are using a drum carter, just go nice and slowly, be gentle. Uh, this is really a lot thicker than I want it to be. Don't be afraid to stop your wheel. That's <laughs> like, um, and go back and kind of fix a problem area, which this does not want to. That doesn't want to pull apart at all. So, <laughs> whatever. Um, you can, like, tear it out if you want. But I'm not going for ultimate perfection here. I'm not making, like, a lace weight yarn. Um, this will probably be a DK weight yarn. So. Most of the time, if people are spinning from the cloud, um, it will be plucked. So it'll be more floofy, which I don't have time to show in this. I do have some that's plucked, but it's not what I'm working on right now. So, and if you find it getting too thin, then just, I, I find it's easier just to pull it off and then reattach it instead of trying to fix it and 
getting it to be a bit thicker. Um, Angora likes high twist and to be spun thinly. So it's not a very good or hardly feasible option for like a bulky weight if you're doing 100% of it. And that's what we're talking about. So, um, but yeah. Uh, I've been finding that the short forward draw is kind of easiest. You can do more of a long draw, but because the five, the staple length is generally relatively short compared to wool, um, it makes it a little harder. And since your fiber is not prepped, because we're splitting it in the cloud, or from the cloud, that can also make it more challenging. So I will show that when I do the roll, I guess. <laughs> I will probably stop the video, this video, after I finish this handful, and then make another video showing me spinning from a roll egg. And this is just a big mess. Like, I don't mind some naps, but I don't want a huge mess like that. So sometimes it's a little second cut that's caught and usually it's just pulled around, um, folded on itself. It's like just long enough to fold around itself, but this, I'm, I'm making a big mess now. Um, it's like felted, so I'm just gonna rip these out at this point. Because the other ends are stuck in there pretty well. So it's sometimes you want to correct things and sometimes it's best to leave it alone. Um, but again, we're not going for perfection right now. I'm just trying to fill this box. <laughs> um, but I do want to try and get some consistency. So <sighs> Um, plucked angora is preferred. Um, it's going to, you know, you don't have to deal with these cut ends, which sometimes they like to just stick together. And then, you know, usually when you're spinning, you want all your ends to be a little bit separated. You don't want to spin like one big chunk together unless you're doing a lock spin, which I don't think would work terribly well with Angora. So. so you just need to find like what's a good thickness for you to spin and how much twist you need. I'm kind of doing a rubbish job right now. Like what I was doing. See these are all cut ends here. So I want to kind of stagger them by drafting it down. And then I like to smooth over with my fingers that are drafting out. You can do like different techniques for spinning. It doesn't all have to be exactly the same. Oop, and there it goes. <laughs> Slipped right out of my fingers. Um, and then a lot of times when you're pulling it back out, it breaks off. And that's just, didn't have enough twist in that spot. So. I'm 
you can see here, this is pretty much one walk, which is not the best to have it all together with it. Excuse me. I'm going to add some more twist back in this. I'm just going to set that off. Um, okay, I'm still recording. <laughs> so right now my hands are really close together. So I'm just trying to get, get started again. Find my groove, hopefully. It is a slippery fiber, so you just take your time with it and like, look at this. This is what happens when you have walks that stick together. Um, I don't like that, but whatever. I'm not gonna make it worse. <laughs> Point, you're probably like, oh, this lady doesn't even know what she's doing. Just try to have some fun with it. I let that little nut go. It is kind of nice sometimes to have little nuts. I feel like it makes it look more hands fun. Not like super perfect like the commercial yarn so you know just have some and and just do a little bit of practice with it have some fun figure out what works um, what type of preparation you want Spinning from the cloud, the nice thing about it is that you don't have to prep it. <laughs> Other than maybe looking for some second cuts if it's shorn. If it's not shorn, it shouldn't have any second cuts. It shouldn't have any short fibers in it. Because you're only supposed to pluck the rabbit if it has a full coat and it's growing its second one in. <clears throat> and you're only getting what's ready to come out. You're not pulling at like the base of the hair shaft and pulling it out. You're pulling from the tips. So it's only the mature hair that's coming out. Or at least that's how it should be. Um... Some people comb their rabbits. Um, I do some, but that's, I use a comb to like straighten things out and um, kind of like prevent mats from happening partially. Um, if I do find a mat, I do not comb it out. <laughs> um, Sometimes you'll find like just one little section is starting to mat up and that you can usually just pluck out. But if it's like a full on mat or in like a bigger area, not just like a few follicles, then they need to be cut out. You just think like if your hair is like really knotted for some reason, like you haven't showered in a while and you were rolling around in the dirt or something, like, I don't know. But um, 
if for some reason you have really knotted hair, you wouldn't want somebody to come and brush your hair out, like, if it's really bad. And it's the same, you know, for a rabbit, if you, or any animal, like a dog or whatever, if you start brushing out mats, it's going to hurt a lot. But anyways, this is about spinning, not taking care of rabbits. I just love the rabbits and I do all the stuff with the rabbits, so. <clears throat> um, so you, I feel like uh, rabbits do get dandruff sometimes. They sh like don't want your rabbits to have dandruff or whatever rabbit you're buying from. Um, but it does happen. So, sometimes that is also an issue when you're spinning. You find these like little flecks of white stuff. And that would be dandruff. Again, I'm stopping. I'm not worried about spinning 100% of the time. I don't even know what's going on there. Just take that bit out. It's kind of stuck together. So, um, if you're starting out spinning Angora and you haven't really tried it before, um, I would try to start on a small whirl, if you're comfortable with that. If it's going too fast, then change to a larger whirl, or try to much slower. Like, it's hard to treadle slow on a small whirl, and that's where you have to be, like, learn your, the technicality of your wheel, because every wheel is a little different. So, for this one, it's, it's hard to keep it going when you're going really slow. But, um, when I started this bobbin, um, I tried to start with the small whirl, and I had to change to the bigger whirl, so, anyways, on to the next 